What is music to make a change? This project believes music is the key to change the world. Music to Make a Change is a series of recitals that invites people to reflect on their lives and question their actions. With our music, we are inviting you to face the situation of the world as it is, so we can all make something about it. With music of living black and Mexican composers, and with a glimpse of the life and opinion of all the people involved in this series, Music to Make a Change is going to put a seed of change and a will to fight for all the change in all of us. There are two associations involved in this project, Castle of Our Skins and Racismo MX. They need all the help we can give. Now we can start by donating through PayPal. That way, they can keep fighting every day to make a change in the world. We need to be aware of our actions. We need to give love and be humble enough to accept the change. Because we all need the change. The world needs us to change. Then what else do we need to do it? Let the music be the change the world needs. Hola, mi nombre es Armando Ortiz Montenegro. El día de hoy en Música por un Cambio les tengo de nuevo a la gran violinista mexicana Gloria Pérez, hoy interpretando la obra Between Worlds del gran compositor afroamericano Carlos Simon. Así que, sin más por el momento, les doy la bienvenida a Música por un Cambio y comenzamos.
Hi, Carlos. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you for having me. Doing well. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Carlos. Um, tell us uh, a little bit uh, about yourself. For the people that are not acquainted with you and your work, uh, tell us a little bit about who you are. Uh, yeah, well, I am a composer uh, based here in, in Washington, D.C., uh, uh, United States Capitol. Um, and I, I, I'm actually an Atlanta native. I was born in, born in Washington, D.C., but I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, which is a Southern America. And, um, you know, I draw my inspiration for my pieces from African-American culture. And, uh, and understanding how rich and, and um, uh, how much of a wellspring African-American culture to, is to American culture is is something that I, I you know I, I enjoy I love it's it's like a, it's a thing that that sort of defines me and defines who I am um, not just as, as a person but also through my music it, tell us a little bit about your work um, what have you been done across these years to develop your career as a composer Sure. Well, it, it really starts with understanding who I am as a, as a, as a person. You know, I mentioned earlier, it's like African-American culture. My, my father is actually a, a minister, uh, uh, a preacher. And, and so I grew up hearing my dad preach. I played organ, piano in my father's church. And so that's where I started music. And, you know, I would write songs for the choir um and you know it would always be uh sacred of course um, then when i got to high school and in college i just began um, writing for musical theater and you know and doing different things that kind of spark my composition uh, my composition of voice so you know um i my music always goes back to um storytelling you know and and then that's what I saw in, in church, you know, in, in my dad's church, you know, he would always tell stories uh, in his sermons and uh, it was, I would always be sort of accompanying um, the stories as he was, as he was, you know, preaching, uh, you know, there's music that plays such a rich, I mean, plays such a huge role um, in, in, in African American church. And if you watch, you go watch on YouTube, there are plenty of videos of African-American preachers and the music is sort of undergirding the drama and the storytelling. And so I always go back to that in my music. Um, and I have one piece called Amen, which is for a symphony band as well as symphony orchestra. And it, it, the idea is that it's supposed to represent an African-American Pentecostal church a service in, in 13 minutes. Uh, and so like you get the beginning of the service and church bells and like choir singing, this is all in the orchestra. Uh, and then there's, you know, a slow section where it's more like reverent and, and, you know, just praise to God. And then it, 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 it climaxes to something that's joyful and, and celebratory. And, um, so I, the idea is there is you, you're encapsulating a, a church service into a piece. So that people who are not familiar with African American experience can experience this thing through uh, through music. You said something interesting at the beginning of, of, of what you what you have told us about you that African American culture has given a lot to American culture. Um, I know that many people are not uh, very familiar with this idea of African American culture giving so much to American culture. Can you explain us a little bit of what you mean by that? Sure, sure yeah, yeah. Musically speaking, it, 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 one could argue that American music culture, African-American music culture is American culture. I mean, you look at artists like Aretha Franklin and Marvin Gaye and, you know, that, that whole Motown sound. Um, you know, even today, you know, the Pharrell Williams and, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce. It's of course they're worldwide, but in the context of a, a, an American experience, you know, you take those artists out of the equation. What do you have? What do you have left? And so, like, you know, that's of course is popular music, 
but you know, in the classical world, it is we're just as you know, uh, uh, I guess prominent, if you will. And so there are many, many composers who are doing great work. William Grant Still, of course. You know, you have uh, Margaret Barnes and Florence Price, and these uh, artists. Um, you know, are of course are getting a lot of play now um, and, and throughout the world. But you look at composers like George Gershwin um, and Frank Buffet and uh, these mainstays of classical music, but they were drawing from African-American music, Rhapsody in Blue, you know, American Impairments. It, there's so many pieces that sort of draw from the African-American experience. And in some ways it's appropriation. Um, and you, you're just sort of taking something away from another culture and then claiming it as your own. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it, it, it goes to show you how um, important African Americans are to music in this country. And what has been your own experience on being an African American musician uh, and an African American composer in this classical music scene, both in, in, in the US and, and in the world? Being uh, an African American in classical music has been, um, I, I would say it, it's been an opportunity. I, I'll, I'll mark it as that. It's been an opportunity for me. I've seen it to, to re-educate, you know, because traditionally speaking, um, the classical world, the concert music is a space for, it's a white space. You know, was it meant for people who look like me or you? Um, and it, it, it's, that's what, just what it is. And so when I go into a performance or a premiere and I'm there working with the orchestra and, you know, talking with them, it, it's, it's, you know, I'm constantly, thinking, okay, I have to like sort of push the envelope here and, and make it seem, make it feel natural, you know, in a space that is not, you know, wasn't built for me. Uh, and so um, I'm always aware of that. And so it's an opportunity to, again, to re-educate or to educate people about my culture, you know, through music. And at, at the same time, not only educating, you know, the performers, but also the audience, you know, it, it's important. It's one thing that really gets to my heart is when I see African Americans or, or you know, people who are, you know, just, uh, just young people who are, you know, wanting to do music and they see me on stage and they see an African American who has written this piece and it's like, they didn't even know it was possible, you know? And so that, that's sort of, it's sort of helping a different generation, the, the generation to come. And it, it, that gives me fuel and, and inspiration to keep going. You, you, you said that a part of, of all of this is to educate through music, both the musicians yeah. and, the, and the audiences. And yeah. that a, having a presence that is not um, maybe, maybe the traditional presence on stage, the classical white man on stage, um, that also that, that gives a part on educating. But how music itself can educate the, the, the musicians and the audiences? Right. Well, I think it goes back to the, the expression of culture through music. Um, yes, I could write a piece about, you know, the, the moon, the, the stars and you know, or, you know, something that's universal in a way. Uh, but, you know, and I, I do, I do write those pieces, but they don't connect with me as much as the pieces that I, I, I write that are directly influenced um, to being an African-American, you know, I mentioned a piece, Amen, you know, that's directly in correlation to me as a uh, African-American male, with my father preaching in a Pentecostal church, you know, and that it's so that's culture. That that's something that is it's it's um, intrinsic to uh, American culture, and so I have to put that into my music, and and by doing so, I'm educating someone who hasn't had the experience like I have, who's never heard of 
black Pentecostal church. Um, never heard a preacher, you know, climax in his sermon uh, where he's like singing his 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 uh, his sermon. And I'm you, there. There's so many different elements to that 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 are a part of education. And in this in this part of, of, of education and, and and all of these elements that come together, how can we say that this education that we are receiving on schools, that we are receiving on conservatories, is having an influence on, or, or an impact on on the way we develop the music and the way we deliver the music? I see. Yeah, well, it, education is so important. Having great teachers uh, at, you know, the elementary level, or the middle school, and all, all the way through, it's important to have great teachers. And uh, and by doing so, you know, in music, music education, you, you develop a pipeline that is directly correlated to um, the music industry, whether it be a, a performer in a, a in the orchestra or um, an artist, you know, who is a performing artist, you know, traveling. Um, yes, they, I guess, I don't know what the actual percentage of, of, of a student who, you know, studies music in high school uh, or, you know, in, in grade school and they continue it on versus the people who actually, you know, pursue something else. But um, it's important that music be a part of the curriculum um, and and it catered to um, people who look like us you know uh, if, if there are students who want to you know play music of their culture you know it's important for them to, to experience that in 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 school you know that that's so important my wife she is uh, uh, she's a piano teacher and one of her um, her her dreams and then her, well, not dreams but her passion is um, developing piano music that is uh, by African American composers and having her students play them you know no matter what the level is whether it's beginning or expert level and so by doing so it, the students gravitate to um, the music more and they they have more of appreciation because it's there's something they can they connect with, you know, whether it be the composer themselves or the content of the piece and what it's the piece of, is about. And so I think as educators, it's important to to kind of know um, the 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 um, the interests of your students. And you said it's important to know about the content of the, of the piece. There is a specific piece that I wanted to, to talk about today, which is a piece that uh, was performed early, early, earlier. This is Between Worlds. Uh, can you tell us a little bit on how Between Worlds came to be? Sure. So I, when I moved from Atlanta, Georgia, to Washington, D.C., the great thing about D.C. is that there are plenty of museums. I mean, they're the it's it's just amazing and they're all free you can go and, and just see great art you can see great uh, just artifacts that are um, just mind-blowing and so the one of the first things that I did when I moved here to DC was go visit one of the museums and there was a, an exhibit um, dedicated to Bill Trailer who was a, a sub-taught artist he was born a slave um, but lived to see the end of slavery. Uh, and he lived through Jim Crow, which was a horrific time for African Americans, um, sort of the beginning of the century, of the 20th, 20th century, uh, where laws were put in place to directly influence or to minimize uh, the, the advancement of African Americans. Uh, so he lived through slavery, he lived through Jim Crow, and he actually died closer, you know, uh, the 60s and the 70s. And, you know, it, it, he saw all these things and he, you could see it in his art. He was a self-taught artist. He would draw and um, on cardboard or anything that he had. And so the piece is really just, you know, inspired by his work. Um, I mean, I was just blown away by just the, the raw of, of feelings. And I could feel um, the struggle um, in his work, 
Yes, it's it, if you look at it, it's very, you know, simple, seemingly simple, but if you look closer, it's very complex. Very, very complex. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit on what has been your experience winning the the Sphinx medal uh, recognition, because I know it's a very important recognition for uh, black and Latinx composers. And how, how that, ex that has been for you? I mean, it's, I mean, it really is an honor. The, the, the Sphinx organization is one that has been sort of in, in the foreground uh, as far as advancing black and Latinx uh, musicians. And so to be, uh, awarded its highest, highest, um, highest honor uh, was, you know, indeed uh, surreal and it's still very surreal. Uh, I, I honestly, I don't feel like I deserve it because so many other people who are, you know, way, way more qualified, but, you know, I, I'm grateful nonetheless. And, you know, I, my, my goal is to use the award as, a, to, as, as an advancement Uh, of uh, my platform of and just telling stories of, of my people and to, to constantly sort of change the narrative and to shift the, um, uh, the, the, the consciousness of African Americans and, and, and Latinx uh, musicians and, and people of color in this space. You know, that's, that's the whole point. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm just forever grateful. Can you, you, I know, I know you just released an album called My Ancestor's Gift. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit more about this storytelling that you place on that album. Sure. I, when I started my graduate degree uh, in Michigan, I wanted to really, really dig deep and uh, try to, to try to understand um, music in general, because <laughs> uh, music is, it's, it's so vast. Uh, but I wanted to understand it in the context of African American culture. And so that it was a three year graduate program um, at the University of Michigan. And, you know, every piece that I wrote at the end of my um, matriculation there, it, I wanted, I, it's, I, it was like, always geared toward African American issues, whether it be About police brutality, which is a huge thing in this country right now, and it always has been. Um, uh, whether it was about um, women, African American women, in uh, in uh, the community, or you know, it, 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 there's so many different things that I wanted to talk about in the in the album. So I, um, you know, we went went to the studio and got my friends together and uh, we recorded the music and I wasn't planning on, you know, having it as an, an official release, you know, with all the bells and whistles and I just wanted to record my music, you know, as, as a sign that I finished this degree and I wrote all this music and this is what it was. And it just so happened things sort of lined in, lined up to whether I could release it with a, on a label and, Um, have you know marketing for that, um, but you know it, it the, the the project was it it in a way it was very very important for my my development and it sort of marks my understanding of who I am as a person um, in those three years and um, and and the idea is to kind of educate you know educate people of of what the pieces are about. And I just didn't want the pieces to be played separately. I wanted sort of like these short interludes where the spoken text and interviews with my friends just kind of set up the piece so people can understand what I was writing about and not just like um, um, listen to the music um, without intention. Um, and again, so it, it plays into more of a, like changing the, the consciousness and shifting. So. Um, I, I'm just, I'm grateful that uh, the, the project is, is still going. I'm working on another one as, as we speak. So uh, that should be released next fall, hopefully. And um, yeah. And can you, can you give us an example of one of the pieces uh, or, or maybe one of the stories that you have on your album that we can um, grasp on 
of this storytelling? So there's a piece called Elegy, A Cry from the Grave. And it's for string quartet. And it's, 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 it's about, uh, it, was, it was dedicated to um, uh, Michael Brown, Trayvon Martin. These are all African-Americans at that time in 2014 who were murdered by police in this country. And, uh, and it's, for me, as an African-American male, it, it hurt. It, I was very afraid um, of the police and I've always been afraid. And, and so, but to see the, the effect of those murders and to see that those police were not charged, um, they were not arrested, you know? And so that, it made me fearful, but also sick. I was physically sick. Um, and so in order to kind of combat that, I used music. I wanted to use it to, to be therapy and sort of get me through it. Um, and so the piece is, is very um, lyrical, uh, and, 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 and it's meant to be, for me, it's meant to be therapeutic and to say, okay, this is what happened, but you know, you can use music to get through it um, and understand that hopefully things will be fine. It'll be okay. And uh, well, we're working toward change. Uh, so the piece is, yeah, it, just that, you know, uh, so yeah, again, I use a an interlude to set it up. Um, I interviewed a friend of mine. Um, his name was Quantes Presley, and we were talk. We just had a conversation about um, police brutality in America, and what you heard on the album is just a short uh, excerpt of the conversation that we had. It was just a long conversation, and we recorded it. But that's that's a he talks about. Um, uh, one of the one of the uh, men who was who was murdered, he was selling cigarettes out of the back of his car, and he talks about how that's related to systemic racism in this country. You know, do you think that he, at the age of forty, he wanted to be selling CDs out of the back of his car? You know, he, no, he, that's not a dream of his, I'm sure. But because our country has 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 not afforded the same opportunities as others have, or white Americans, then that's, that's what he was forced to do. And by doing so, they had encountered the police and the scuffle, and then these, you know, that, that's how things happen in this country. So um, just highlighting, you know, these little stories to kind of set up the music allows us to, to, to understand uh, what's happening. I invite everybody, everybody that is hearing us today and watching us today to to hear uh this 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 cd of well this yeah this it's this album of my ancestors gift and i i just wanted to to ask you one one last thing uh, what do you think is a thing that we can change as a society and a thing that we can change as in this world of music well i think the 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 uh, just to use the the last track on my album uh, is you know we we have to be sympathetic of others no matter what the struggles are um, and and to be our uh, our brother's keeper or our sister's keeper and to really really understand what our neighbor is going through and to be willing to help you know and and we if we uh, do that on a local level and everyone's doing that then essentially you know it, it expands out you know to to our government and to to the world at, at large and you know if we do that in in every industry you know in the music industry and the, just the idea of just being sympathetic you know i know that sounds very cliche but it, it it's very true you know and, and it's extremely effective um, just to be sympathetic of someone's um, uh, struggles and uh, to be willing to change. Um, so that those are, I mean, it's a thing that I think it's, it's more behavior than, uh, and it's related to action too. So uh, you can use that principle and apply it in different industries, you know, not just in music. Uh, of course, music is, is it's something that 
you know, you, you want to do this is what we're talking about because it's, it's needed for sure. Uh, but it's, it's uh, someone who's not a musician who's listening to this. It's something we can, you can do in, in whatever field you're in. Well, I hope that uh, we can all learn from this interview. Thank you very much, Carlos. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to have you here. And uh, I don't know, you want to say something else before we close the interview? No, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. It's, it's quite an honor um, to be on this platform. And, and I am so grateful just to, to share this space with you. Thank you so much. I, and you're an amazing player. You're great. Uh, and I really admire what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Gracias a todos ustedes por habernos acompañado el día de hoy en Música por un Cambio, en esta semana que acabamos de concluir. Gracias a Gloria por su gran interpretación de estas dos obras en estos dos días y por la entrevista que nos dedicó. Gracias a la maestra Villanueva y al maestro Simon por su música, por sus palabras y por sus enseñanzas. Espero que juntos sigamos todos unidos haciendo este cambio. Los invito la siguiente semana para que escuchemos el día domingo y el día lunes el recital de la pianista, cantante, directora de coros e ingeniera Yonora Guzmán, una gran amiga mía, interpretando las obras del de compositor mexicano Jorge Delgado y del de compositor cubano Roberto Valera. No se lo pueden perder en Música por un Cambio la siguiente semana, día domingo y día lunes. Recordándoles que en la descripción del de video podrán encontrar los links para poder hacer donaciones a las asociaciones Racismo MX y Castle of Our Skins. Recuerden que tienen que tener un PayPal para poder hacer eso. Ahí también abajo está el link. Y también les recuerdo que nos sigan en nuestras redes sociales, tanto en Facebook como en Instagram, Música por un Cambio, así nos pueden encontrar. Gracias. Gracias a todos ustedes y sin más, sin más me queda concluir el día de hoy en esta semana de Música por un Cambio. Mi nombre es Armando Ortiz Montenegro y que la música sea el cambio que el mundo necesita. Hasta luego.